Good morning. Hey, it's the 4th of July weekend, and uh, it's actually a pretty decent morning. It's pretty more, pretty early, and uh, so last week I did a patching video, and I got quite a few comments or different people asking me if I could do a sewing video as well, so I'm doing that. So we're here at Big and Bright Inflatables. Uh, I did this out front. I'll show you at the end maybe my uh, outdoor studio or whatnot, but we're going to do a patching video today. I mean a sewing video today. So when we're talking about sewing, I'm not getting a machine out or anything like this. This is like on site or in between rentals. We're going to be using a sewing awl or a speedy stitcher today. Um, I just want to preface it by saying what we're going to show today is not necessarily a permanent fix. This is uh, will get you through that rental or get you through maybe a couple rentals until you can take it in and get it sewn by um, a professional or you know with a professional machine double stitch that whole thing now I will show you a few tricks to do it maybe to where it could last a while um, and you know if this is a very old slide and you're just trying to get the last half of a season in on it or something like that maybe you could do it so if you guys are not familiar with a speedy sister or a sewing all what we're gonna be showing today is how to do a stitch like this I'm showing it in the close-up camera it's very spaced out, it's not double stitched, it's not gonna completely hold air. And I'll show you a few more, but like I said, it will get it together. All right, a couple other things. Hey, listen, we're not gonna be using these today, but it's good to have these things around the shop in case you ever need to repair something. I keep, uh, this is a push pin with um, a bunch of different needles in it that might work. I keep some pretty thick thread. I mean, this isn't the thread that goes into units or anything like that, but in case I just ever have to stitch stuff up together. I was at Walmart the other day and I was buying a bunch of stuff and it had needles and thread and stuff and um, the lady made a joke. She said, oh, the, the stuff that you were buying for your wife was fast, but it took you a long time to pick your stuff and I was like, nope, it's all mine. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm gonna have some tape. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm gonna have a lighter. I've got this fancy lighter. This is an electrical lighter. I got it in Amazon. It makes just a very small electrical, but if you don't have that, you can just use a regular lighter, okay? All right, so here's the Speedy All. You can pick this up wherever. Let me tell you about the few pieces of it. Okay, this is just a bobbin cover. This is what you call a bobbin. When you're sewing, a bobbin is something that holds the thread, basically. I shouldn't take this out because sometimes it's hard to put through, but I'm gonna try to show you each step of how to do this. Okay, so if you if you can cut this with a very fine knife, I mean scissors, oh yeah, definitely gonna want scissors. With this good point, then you should be all right, but you take it from underneath and there's a little hole inside, it's a little hard to see, here's the top, but you slide it right through. This is the part I said, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this on film. If it takes me too long, I will speed it up. Oh, good deal. Got it on my second try. Pulled it right through. Okay, so you pull it out a little bit. Then you take your needles. So needles sit in the speedy stitcher right here. There's uh, some spots for them. We're gonna use the straight needle right here. See how it's straight? It's got a front groove. These two actually groove pretty much the same, so it doesn't really matter. You're gonna take the thread from the top that came through your hole, and you're gonna slide it through the needle. Okay, that worked out pretty easy for me today. If you're having difficulty with it, this is a very thick wax thread. You can buy one of these at Walmart or anywhere else. You slide this through the hole, then you slide the thread through that and you pull it through. Didn't need that today, which is great. Okay, now on the speedy stitcher, you see this groove and then another groove. So you want the needle to go in straight with that. Oop, I forgot one thing. This actually has to be threaded through this groove right here and up there. Now you want to push it through your needle, like so, and it's going to sit down in that thread. 
See that, that groove right there? Sorry, not that thread. So it goes through this groove, goes through that groove, goes through the needle straight. Then you get your cover, and you take your cover down over, pull the thread out, and you screw it on. It's important that it's in that groove so it's not in the threads of this thing. Now what you got is you've got your speedy stitcher set up and ready to go. Now you do one more thing, you take this and you turn it like that and pull it tight. That creates a little bit of resistance and helps it go out slower. Then wind your bobbin, stick it in, put the cover on. You want to make sure that it's not bound up or else it'll make it harder when you're trying to stitch. Let me get it tighter. There we go. So that's the setup of the actual Speedy Stitcher itself. Now, I'm using the same thing as I did last week. Let me get this stuff out of my way a little bit. And I've prepared a tear. So, let's say you got an opening like this in an inflatable. Well, listen, if it's right before a rental, and you just need to get it done um, and you can't get to the inside push it down like this and go to town trying to speedy stitch it okay so what you got to do use the same techniques we're going to show you in a minute but if you have time and you can get to the back side we are going to go and show you how to do it from the back side now again the technique is going to be exactly the same it's just if you do it on the back side, you're not going to be able to see it and it's going to look good. So just like in the patching, anything you can do from the back side, let's do from the back side. Okay, now you're going to see this material's beat up. It's already got a bunch of holes in there. We're going to only be doing one line of stitching and it's going to be very thick. So you're still going to lose quite a bit of air. But I'll show you a way to reduce that. Take another piece of material and we're going to create a backer material. So, go a little bit longer than the area you want to do. This is going to make it a little harder because we're going to be sewing through extra area. I like to like line it up, put the backer here. I got some duct tape here. Again, not necessary, but it's going to make our life a little easier. This is some serious duct tape, some T-Rex tape. So we got the line, and then I'm adding this duct tape just to hold it in place. Then we're going to flip it over. Got a bunch of extra threads here, so I'm going to cut them off. So these threads are going to want to run now. So I'm going to go ahead and burn them, and again, if you have this, this is the best. If you have a regular lighter, be careful, don't do it quite as much. I'm just going to try to burn these threads a little bit. Hoping to prevent them from running a little bit. May not do a great job, but I'm trying. Then I'm going to tuck this over. I sure hope the video is coming out on this side as good as I hope it will. Now we got it in place. So what we've accomplished here is we're gonna stitch up our stitch, but we're also adding a backer material. Now it's gonna be harder because we're going through four layers, but this new layer doesn't have any holes in it. So this new layer is not going to lose air as fast as it would without any backer that already had holes and everything like that. Okay, now that we got our backer all in place, what we're going to do is we're going to feed the speedy stitcher through. Got to push through all four layers. Now, you pull back a little bit, it's going to create a hoop. What you realize is this hoop is on the front side. We don't want to pull the front side out because we need to pull the slack out. So you pull the slack out. Now, what we need to do is pull enough through, and sometimes it's a little hard to do 
sometimes the bobbin gets a little stuck, but you need to have enough to run the entire run that we're gonna do, plus a little extra to tie it off. So this should be plenty. Now, you pull it back through. So now we've led left, enough on the back side. So what the speedy stitcher does is it creates a lock stitch. A lock stitch is the same thing a sewing machine does. So you have to have the thread to create the back of the lock stitch. Then we're gonna take another, the second one through here. I'm doing them about a quarter inch apart. You could try to do them a little tighter, but it's not easy. Okay, then when you pull back a loop is created, but that loop is on the front and we need to go through the back. So I push this through and I move the loop to the back. See how that loop went to the back? Now I take the back thread and I pull it through the loop. I hold it out here and I hold it firm. Then I pull this through and now you, t you tighten there creating a nice tight, and you tighten here, creating a nice tight one on top. This is where we've created the lock stitch. Now we do this again and we repeat it over and over for the entire run, which will take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna go about a quarter inch away, push through all four, bring it down. Again, it's in the front, don't want that. It will create a, a knot that I can't use. So I've moved the hole to the back Push this through, again, held it out tight, bring it back, nice tight stitch, tighten that stitch up, tight on top, tight on bottom. Next stitch, I'm gonna do two more for you and then I'm gonna fast forward because this does take a little while. Again, nice big stitch at the back. Pull your thread through. Sometimes when you're using it, let me try turning it around. Sometimes when you're doing it, it will pull the thread in the right direction and it'll be easier. If I pull it down, oh, that time it gave me both. So I know I need to go in the back one. So that was easier. Pull it through. Tighten those stitches up in between every one. Tighten the stitches. Okay, so I didn't actually leave myself enough thread at top, so always leave yourself plenty of thread. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie off this knot and show you how. Then I'm gonna start a second one to run the rest of the thread. So here's how you tie off the knot, all right? You push the next one through, like so, boom. And you get yourself some slack. <laughs> and then you just cut the thread. Now you can throw it, cut it really on either side, but you wanna give yourself enough slack. So pull slack through. Okay, now then you make sure you hold. This is through the needle so we don't wanna lose it. So make sure you, when you pull it, it's gotta come out of the needle. See what I'm saying? Boom. Then you pull the needle back out, so your speedy stitcher's out. Now you have both on one side. And then here you just make a, a double knot, basically. Hope you can see it, but you just, knot this thing off twice once twice now it's wax so it, it doesn't it slides a little bit okay but the good thing about wax is this is where you come and you burn it so again this one's going to work great it's going to burn through it's going to cut it for me in addition to cutting it it kind of sealed the knot it kind of melted it together a little bit. So I've melted those threads. Now, 
If you had a regular lighter, you'd have to do it a little bit differently. So now we have one set of stitching. So I'm gonna go back into fast forward and I'm gonna stitch the rest of this so I can show you the final product. All right, so we're doing the last one again, so I'll show it one more time. Last stitch. Pull out. Get yourself plenty of slack. You can slide it to the back side of the needle if you want and cut it off right there. Now you can pull the needle out. Got slack on the top and the bottom. We're gonna make that knot one more time, as tight as we can. Again, being wax. We're gonna burn the top off. This is only a couple bucks on Amazon. I wouldn't, I would tell you to invest in it. We're gonna melt those together. Ooh, there we go. Now. We could take off the duct tape because we're stitched. Okay, so what we've got is a pretty decent job. I'm not the best in the world by any means, but this would get us by for a while. We've got it fully stitched. We've got backer so not all the air can come through. Show you from the front side. There we go, looks pretty decent. Now we could cut off some of the loose threads and whatnot. But you're back in business, you're going, and it's pretty good because you know we've got the backup stitching, so. Again, there's threads that could be cleaned out. But all in all, we're back in business. That hole and with the back or less air is going to get out so i wish that i could say that the sewing all as is as easy to use as patching it's not it takes some time and some patience the thing that i do wrong most of the time is i don't uh, i'm not paying attention and i put the thread in front of the needle instead of behind the needle through the hoop and you basically get everything twisted and you have to undo some stuff uh, so cut that one off sew it up and then start over again so I tried to express how important it was to, to get the slack behind the needle and then make your uh, your back thread go through to make your lock stitch okay so that's the most difficult part but you definitely with this technique are able to uh, to continue a rental or maybe even get by for a few weeks or carry something through the end of its life but a professional seller with a machine and dual stitching is the way to to truly repair something big but in a pinch this will work for you thank you for uh thank you for putting up with me for the last i don't know how long it took this is a long video so i appreciate it quick bonus the weather was nice today Use some blowers to hold the camera. Here's our background into the warehouse. This is our outdoor studio today.